Welcome to Knowledge Box. My name is Alex and I have a question. If I were to drop these two objects, one being a book that weighs about 250 grams and one being a noticeably heavier brick, which would hit the ground first? It's a seemingly simple question and a lot of you might be inclined to think that the brick being heavier would hit the ground first. But as it happens, and if you remember from physics class, they actually hit the ground at the same time. But why is this the case? Well, many people might be tempted to think that the force of gravity acts equally on all objects of any mass, but this also isn't true. So what's going on? Well, all of this can be explained by a simple piece of 17th century mathematics, Isaac Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion can be expressed in a pretty simple formula, F equals ma, where F is the force applied to the object in newtons, m is the mass of the object in kilograms, and a is the acceleration that the object experiences. For example, if an object has a mass of 30 kilograms and it's accelerating at a speed of 5 meters per second squared, then we know that the force applied to the object must be 30 times 5, which is 150. When an object is in free fall, the only force that's acting on it that isn't negligible is gravity. Now here on Earth, acceleration due to gravity is always 9.81 meters per second squared. This is a constant. And so because F is equal to M times by a constant, the force acting on an object is always directly proportional to its mass. For example, if an object has four times the mass, it will also have four times the amount of force applied to it. This formula can be rearranged to make the acceleration the subject of the formula. If we do so, we'll see that A is equal to F divided by M. For instance, if you had an object with a mass of five kilograms being acted on by a force of 20 newtons, then the acceleration would be 20 divided by 5, which is 4. So we've seen that we can rearrange the formula to make the acceleration the subject. And we've also seen that force is directly proportional to mass. So let's put them together. Our book weighs about 250 grams. Now we know that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second. So by timesing these together, we can work out that the force acting on this object due to gravity right now is about 2.4525 newtons. So now we have everything that we need to know in order to prove that A will always stay the same regardless of the mass of the object. That is, they will always fall at the same speed. As an example, let's imagine that we took an object of double the mass of our book, 500 grams. Because the force is directly proportional, it would also double. This would mean that our new values would be m is equal to 0.5, f is equal to 4.905, and 4.905 divided by 0.5 is well, 9.81 meters per second. Again. Okay, let's get wild. Let's take our current values and times them by 6. That would mean that our new values are m is equal to 3 and f is equal to 29.43. We divide and we find that a is still 9.81 meters per second. So we can increase or decrease the mass of an object however we want, but force is directly proportional to mass. This means that the acceleration due to gravity will always stay the same. Ergo, objects will fall at the same rate. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Wait a minute. What about paper, feathers, things like that? They obviously don't fall at the same rate as heavy bricks and things. What gives? Well, earlier I said that the only force acting on a free-falling object that isn't negligible is gravity. But this is only true for objects like this brick, which has a low surface area to mass ratio. For objects like this paper, which has a much higher surface area to mass ratio, air resistance comes into play, which is a force that acts in the opposite direction to gravity. So the natural question to ask is, what if there were no air? What if there were no air resistance? If we were to drop a feather and a brick in an environment where there was no air resistance, would they hit the ground at the same time? Well, the only way that I can think of to practically test this would be to go to one of the big industrial vacuums at NASA. But small time scientists only get the opportunity to do such things once in a blue moon. In 1971, American astronaut and commander of the Apollo 15 mission to the moon, David R. Scott, stood on the lunar surface holding in one hand a heavy hammer and in the other a feather. He dropped them and lo and behold, they hit the ground at the same time. Of course, on the moon, which is much smaller, g is only 1.6 meters per second rather than 9.81. But regardless of the speed at which the objects fell, it was uniform, just as Newton's theories predicted in the 17th century. These laws from so long ago are the very same laws that govern the physics of sports, that describe the motions of the planets, and the very same laws that put man on the moon. It only takes one scientific breakthrough in order to change the course of humanity forever. And if that doesn't inspire you to learn about science, well, I don't know what will. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.